It's taking the time to understand their position. You understand and realize it's different than yours, but understanding their position, accepting that there is some merit to their position, will allow you to get to a resolution. Because if you don't understand and accept their side, you're not going to incorporate any of it into your position. Does that make sense? Um, <clears throat> humility, uh, especially when, especially when asking for something in a negotiation, um, it is very important to display humility, which, again, somewhat loosely defined as being modest or humble to the point of, of submissive. Right, that is, hey, you know, it's up to you here, and, and sort of, I'm hanging in the balance. I understand I'm giving you some power here, um, but I'm in a tough spot, and I need some help. Um, being, you know, displaying humility goes a long way with people's general disposition. Um, People will want to help you just inherently um, if you come to them and say, I'm in a tough spot. That's displaying humility. Constantly be thinking about what is the zone of potential agreement here. Um, and it's usually a range. Um, so let's say you know a perfect agreement would be 50-50 coming in from each side. But let's say the zone of potential agreement is maybe, it, it goes out about 10% on each side, right? So you could be standing at the 40 yard line, either side of the 50 yard line, and still be in the zone of, of potential agreement. Does that make sense? Feel free to drop pictures if you want. <laughs> I think there's something that, that is not here as, a, as one of the nine principles, um, but is kind of taken for granted, and that's honesty. Being overly honest to the point of being upfront about everything. Uh, is very important. That's, that will earn the respect of the counterparty immediately. Um, I guess maybe there are ten principles of persuasion. <laughs> Honesty being the first. Uh, so let's not take that for granted. Let's, let, let's add that as one of the principles of persuasion is honesty. Um, and it should probably be number one. It's just a kind of what's going to happen at the end. What do you mean by that? <coughs> If you are, if you're thinking because of your relationship with your boss is a bit strained that there's going to be a no answer, you're going to approach it very, very differently. As opposed to, okay, nope, get that out there. I just need to talk about what my interests are, what I need, what I'm willing to give in order to get that. Forget about who the boss is, hopefully have the boss forget about who you are in this instance, and forget about the fact that you're thinking in the back of your head, there's a 90% chance I'm going to get a no. Because fear of that no is going to change the way you approach a negotiation. So, so going, back to, yeah, going back to the idea of what both sides need or are looking for and forgetting about the emotion that's involved. Yes. Uh, okay. yep. And forgetting about projecting what you think the answer is going to be. That's the biggest problem is, is you're going to project. And you're almost asking for a no when you do that. Thanks. So like, in a way, that's like what we were doing in the first module of Champion Access, where we had to learn how to take uh, assumptions out of the situation, because the assumptions make everything personal. Yes, that's exactly right. I'm out, 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 i some of the people that were working there, they always started decreasing. Mine always decreasing, and some of the trainees that was there, they always started decreasing as well. But I sat down, so I let her know, okay, you know, well, I have bills, you know, I have school loans to pay, I have rent to pay, I have phone bills, all other accessories to pay. Not everybody else, you know, is living at home or have everybody else paying their phone, but I have responsibilities as well. And she took that into consideration, and she understood where I was coming from. She was understanding my point of view as well. I was understanding her point of view because it wasn't her fault. It was 
it's because of sort of the piece. It's not like she was just the piece of my eyes because she wanted to. She had no, she pretty much just had no, no, so what I'm looking for. She had no control. Yeah, control over the situation. <laughs> she had no control over the situation. So she had to do what she had to do. But like I said, when we, when she, she understand how strongly I was feeling about the situation, she took it to another step and she was putting me in the position with me where we come to the middle where, okay, my hours are decreasing, but it's not going to be for long. And the next thing, my hours started going up. But the next thing, I was transferred out, but my hours started going up. <laughs> so your needs and your interests, your needs and your interests, yeah. or you got to pay the bills. Yeah. And hey, my hours are decreasing, can't pay my bills. But your mission and your purpose, which you spelled out, was, look, I want more hours. I want to be an AGM. I want to go from red shirt to gray shirt here. I want to make a difference. I want to make an impact with this company. Them knowing that, saying, okay, we understand that you need more money, and now we understand what you want to do with this company. Let's go see what we can do. That's showing the mission and the purpose. The counterparty says, boy, it would be great to have Giovanni as, a, as an AGM here. It would really help our business. That's the benefit to them. There's mutual interest, mutual vision, purpose, negotiation, resolve. Before you said that, they might not have known that you wanted to be a GM.